Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So in this one, what we're going to be learning is questions to ask yourself and your clients. All right. Now the first question that we have on the list, so let's get into it. Uh, I spelled the two colors right there because in our country we spell it with a color with a U. In everywhere else, it's like this. All right. So I don't want to offend anybody. So that's why I'm putting it like this. Okay. So the color scheme. If it's a, let's say it's a single user, a car person that comes to you and says, listen, I want to design a block. Now, in this case, we're already working with a template, so we don't need to ask a lot of questions. But if you're designing it for somebody else, and the first question we we'll normally ask is, do you have a corporate identity menu? All right. Or do you have colors in mind? All right. This is my favorite colors that they want to work with. Because normally, let's say they want to go for a food theme and they want to choose purple and whatever colors that not very well associated with food. I'm not saying purple is not, but I'm just making an exaggeration. Then you kind of need to recommend certain colors for certain industries, all right? So if they don't have a corporate identity manual or whatever the case may be. So that's normally the first thing I would ask. I don't want to go too in depth with this one. Um, I would normally use Figma. Uh, this one right here and I create a new design file all right now then I will basically just set out my colors of the client and then from here I'll just design a rough template just to kind of get an idea out as soon as I can to the client all right without writing any code at first because as coders we like to code first but I would normally just do a plain design just to kind of get an idea a feel for the client to see what they want to do but anyway this is normally where i come and i will just create a file and just set out the different colors right this for me is personally a very important question um how will the website be hosted right now in and i remember in the states or anybody where else they would normally say but this i'm the designer i will dictate to the client where i'm going to host my website all right. Now, the problem is in countries like ours, uh, the client already have a place where they're hosting a website. All right. So they're not interested to move from that hosting company or whatever the case may be. Now, most websites in our country are shared hosting. Now, that's a problem for lateral developers. Now, the reason for that is because sometimes in shared hosting, the you don't have access to the server all right meaning you cannot ssh to the server to run artisan commands and things like that but you can still be able to create the server and stuff like that right i've hosted on that before but the problem is i cannot run cron jobs i cannot run supervisor so if i want to queue task and all that kind of stuff shared hosting is not a good option for laravel developers but you can host it on shared hosting i'm not saying that you cannot but you will know that you are limited in it right now on a virtual private server which is like a service like forge etc etc a way we can use digital ocean and you can access h to the server and you can do a whole lot of bunch of nice stuff but the disadvantage of this is there are cheap alternatives where you can actually host your email address and things like that. In shared hosting, they kind of provide you the email address in your server. And that's why most people here choose this option because here, go as cheap as possible. Now, the thing is, this is ideal for a Laravel developer because you have access to the server. You can run supervisor and all that kind of stuff on the server. But now the other problem is to cost. All right. Now, a person is hosting a blog and things like that. They normally don't want to go for an expensive option. So this has become cheaper over the time, but some people still don't want to go for this option. The reason for that, why I'm mentioning this, is because you have to decide what you're going to do and what are you limited to do. So if you know that they're going to be shared hosting, you will know that Queuing jobs and all the kind of things are out of the question. All right, so don't design the, the website in a way 
that will require those things to happen. So you're very limited at what you can do. So if someone can figure it out how to do it, if you have access to it, by all means, but in most cases you don't have. So with a virtual private server, you will know now, all right, I can implement cron jobs, I can run supervisor, I can do all those things in the back end and no problems. Okay, so obviously with the dedicated server, you have a lot more freedom, but very expensive. Okay, so that's why these are the questions you need to ask yourself before you get started with the project. All right, so if you, the client is telling you, no, I don't want to pay too much, they normally go for shared hosting. But anyway, I don't want to go too much in depth with that. This is the kind of questions you will ask, the pros and the cons, and the budget you're working with. All right, so the next question I will ask in this case, where since we're creating the blog, I'll ask the person how many authors will be on the website. If more, how many will they, how will they be added or created? All right, so if the author, the admin, whoever comes to you, said they want sole, uh, uh, basically, responsibility to say, like, I want to dictate who can be a writer on my blog, and et cetera, et cetera. Right. So then you will know how you need to set up the website or the blog in a sense where you can create, be able for the admin to actually create the user and send an email to whoever the user is or writer to be able to log into the website and things like that. Okay, so that's kind of important. The next thing is do they want comments on the website? We're obviously going to create this. All right, so I'm just putting it out there because the reason for this is because there's other platforms now where you can use discuss or things like that to incorporate that comment section, basically a paid service as a comments, or you design the comments yourself. Now, in this case, we will design it ourselves, but you need to think of the structure that you need to design your website. All right. So actually, I will ask this question before that, but this is not in order. Will they want to add videos or other type of content in the future? Now, the reason for that is because this, so they might want to add, let's say, comments to the videos or any other type of content in the future. So it means if I have to do the comment section right here, right, I need to make this a polymorphic relationship to make sure that listen, if they add additional content later, that I can easily integrate whatever that might be. Okay. So if they're not, then it's all okay. But if they do, I'm not having to read down my website, the database or whatever the case may be. Okay. So that's why it's preferably ideal to do tags and all that kind of stuff in polymorphic way anyways. All right. Because of changes that might come in the future. Now, the thing is, do they want to add moderators to moderate the comments? All right. So if yes, then you'll know, all right. So how do they want to do that? And, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, the next thing is work time frame. Okay. When do they expect the website? So then you listen or, uh, to their response because normally you can you tell the client, okay, this will take so long and so long. But you cannot kind of, when you ask the question, either to yourself, if you think, all right, this will take me two weeks, then you ask the client, and they said, no, I need it by next week. Then you kind of have an idea how long between you and the client, how long this will take. Then you can say, okay, they got a time frame of one week, and you tell them, listen, it's not possible to do it in a week. Otherwise, they get angry with you, unnecessary things. And I think most of have done this work before, they will know. That kind of stuff. All right. So just be realistic. All right. Don't be too optimistic when you give a time frame. So if you think this will take three weeks, don't tell your client two weeks. Be reasonable. Allow yourself an extra week for errors and debugging. Okay. Because that does happen. So if you think it's going to take three, tell the client four. Basically, the rule of principle here is under promise, but over deliver. And I think people are trying to do the opposite because they're so desperate. We over promise, but under deliver. That's not good for your image and things like that. Okay. So I don't think this is some of the things that 
the people that's learning from the series wants to know, but I think there's a couple of guys that wants to maybe make a career out of developing. So I just wanted to discuss some of these things with you. Okay. So there's obviously a whole lot of other questions in here, but I don't want to uh, go too much in depth with that, but I just wanted to get the basics for you guys out there. All right. So we're obviously going to do this block for learning purposes. But during the process, I'm going to treat it as if I'm doing it for someone else and not for myself. All right. So when you do things for yourself, you kind of very slack on certain things, but we have to be professional all the time. All right. So that's it for this one. So if you have any questions that you might think you need to ask your clients or what you normally ask clients, please leave them in the comment section for others to see and also to learn from what you normally would ask. And I would love to read them. And it, we all here to learn. So please add them in the comment section. And yes, all right. So if you find the video useful, please give it a like. All right. Thank you guys for watching and then see you in the next one. Adiós.